Good evening. I Rapstein of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up and this is for Tuesday and we are now sitting here August 10th, 2021 getting on to 555 at night. So an interesting day. What happened today? Well, you can tell by PAVE that it, with the market up that the uh, government has passed, at least the Senate. I shouldn't say the government. The Senate has passed their version of the first leg of an infrastructure bill. Let's applaud it, and I mean that. It will eventually go to the House, but not yet. Uh, Speaker Pelosi from the House of Representatives said she won't consider that unless she gets the $3.5 billion bill and something on the budget. So the Senate is now in session again, and I don't know if they're in at this hour, but they were certainly there all afternoon, doing what's called the Votorama, where uh, each senator brings forth amendments for the budget and so on, things that they've got, they get voted on, they, they can be thrown in, they can be thrown out, they, then they go to the House. Understand what this is. This is the pork that goes attached to a bill, and then it gets either thrown out or accepted in the House. They can do different things, then that can come back to the Senate. So there's a lot of negotiating yet to be done. But it is a good first day. And as you can see, you were up in some of the markets. SPY was up, not QQQ. QQQ in the futures has got a real problem. It, it's lost its upside momentum, so I'd be a bit careful there. Metals got a little bit of a bounce today, but all they're trying to do, I think, is get back inside Bollinger Bands in the futures. And remember, a lot of this relies on what the futures did. In ARC, this is a very bad day. Let's go to yesterday, the day before. You had on the 9th an inside day, if you look at the highs, 125.48 to 122.98. Today you take out both numbers, so you have an outside day down. Do we understand that? That's the first thing. Now you've got a pattern on the swing line with lower highs, lower lows. You have suddenly gone into a downtrend on the swing line. You'd have to get back over today's high tomorrow or the day after to negate that pattern. Got it? If that doesn't occur, where could the market be headed? Well, the first areas, are, I think we talked about it yesterday, if the market pulled back, the 200-day average in gray, 121.80, and today you hit already 121.42. So the next number that had had its support is the 18-day average at 121.33, and that's what the market is trying to stay at right now, right in that general range. If it gives ground, the next support's 118.24. But the important point is here, you still closed over the 18-day average, so you've got the bias up, the trend down, an outside day, and where did the market peak out? Lo and behold, that upper Bollinger Band again. If you learn to play with that, you get a big edge on the markets. You may not believe that, I certainly do. So I see the market really caught in the sideways action more than anything. When you open your eyes up and you look at it, you say, okay, we got too cheap here, we've rallied into the Bollinger Band, and now the market's pulling back. Not much of a play for longer term so far. Momentum. Let's go to yesterday. Do you think you haven't been overbought for the past two, three sessions? I do. You got up to the Bollinger Band, you stalled, you went again, and boom, right back down. I'm not the only one seeing this is the point. When you go to Apple, Apple threw out a down signal today. So in t another outside day down. So if you can take out today's high, which is 147.71, well, that'll negate it and maybe get you up to 149 if that happens on Thursday, on Wednesday or Thursday. If that's not done, you're putting into play the possibility of getting back to the lower Bollinger Band. But more important, look at the bigger picture. Have you been able to get away from this 18-day average? How often do you hear me tell you? If you take my charting course and you learn markets like to go back to a neutral number, an 18-day average is very much that number. It's the shortest major moving average. Now, some people use a 20, some a 21. I use the 18. Is there a right answer? I'll let everybody determine that for themselves. I certainly don't walk on water. Not Joe Granville. If you don't even know who he is, you should look up. 
but lower high, lower and low, down to 143.51, that is the major uh, support. Resistance is the upper Bollinger Band. You, going home, you're in a downtrend. In PAVE, so the market, it's overbought. I, I wouldn't tell clients, right here, I would have told clients when you lost the overbought reading, I won't back away from that, out you go. I'm not bearish, nothing I've said here is bearish. The market though, out, it's exceeding it and going back up, fine. It's one thing that you stepped out of a market you've been friendly on, it's another to be bearish. I'm not bearish the market, not in any manner. But momentum was lost, so when momentum is lost, there's other places to deploy money. When you look at XLI, you got a lower low and a higher high caught again in all this sideways action. And once again, you got readings in the 70s. You're overbought, going sideways. Let the next guy own that. I don't see anything to do there. You've been in an uptrend in the semiconductors. I've told you that I like this market since it embedded. It continues to move higher. If the red line closes under 79 on the slow stochastic, that's when I would say to be out. Until that occurs, I think the pros are buying these breaks, looking for even higher highs. Podex. Podex is one of the markets that turned everything today. You got momentum turning up. Higher lows, higher highs, closed over the 18-day average. So to break the uptrend attempt, you have to get back under 11.10. I'm not looking for a lot out of this. I think that the $12 level up here is going to be the resistance, the first resistance at the upper Bollinger Band. But it's trying to carve out, at least it has the first looks of carving out a bottom. I will say that. When you look at ESGU, as long as you have this embedded reading, I think the pros are stepping in and buying it on each break until you get a reading under 79, then they'll go like that. The market has been unable to get up to the Bollinger Band on a regular basis since the beginning of July. Resistance 102.74. I, I cover this in good detail in the morning subscriber video that I have. The energy sector has been playing each day again at that line in the sand. Do you not see how it's just honing in right there? So you've got a downtrend, upside bias, narrowing the Bollinger Bands. I'll let somebody else figure that one out. By the way, that's the beauty of charts. If it doesn't fit in with what you want, why are you doing anything in it? That, that's my attitude. I have an embedded reading. I'm bullish as can be in the emerging markets here. Why shouldn't I be? The trend is up, the bias is up, and I have an embedded reading. Until it loses that reading, I'm friendly, I think the pros are buying, and I think they're looking for 81.41. In gold, you fell apart with the flash crash on Sunday night, Monday. You now have several days, one, two, three days in a row, if I'm correct, under the lower Bollinger Band. That day's not one of them. You generally, in futures, don't go beyond five outside of a band. They're already fighting in the futures to get back in, and it too has three days under it. So we'll see if they tie together and try to get back into it. You're oversold, you've wiped out a bunch of traders, there's a big level of resistance now above the market, and I pointed out to you that if this 200-day average in gray gets back under the 18, watch out below, because then you have the short term under the medium term, and medium term would then be with all of them. That's bearish. Are you there right now? You are. 18, 100, 200. They can narrow in all they want. You're there. A lot of resistance, and as a bear that would study, not as a bear, as a moving average analyst, which I am one of those, but it's not my main forte. It's the combination of everything that's my main. That's a bearish setup. GDX, look at all the resistance you had here with those averages and boom, fell apart. And now what are you getting? Well, you've got the 18, I'm sorry, the 100 day average is still slightly above, I believe, the. Uh, the 200, you know, if it crosses under, that's another bearish crossover. But you're already down so far, it's hard to do anything with this. And the wipeout in TLT just happened. So yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, 
excuse me, I have allergies. This is how we looked Monday. And I'm pretty sure I would have said I'd look for support now at the combination of the 200 day and the lower Bollinger Band. That's what's happened. That is not a buy signal. It's a signal where I think that the pros are covering shorts. They're saying, okay, that was a big swoop. Can it go lower? Anything can happen. But you're oversold. You're down to areas that typically hold. I think the smart money is coming O-U-T. FXE, right down to the lower Bollinger Band, oversold. I'll stay with what I teach. I think you'll look back and eventually say, oh, yeah, that looks like an area of the market bottomed. Bottoming is not turning a trend, just bottom. The trend isn't even there. The bias is certainly down. The momentum down. You have to go to the weekly charts to see the real trend of the market, and it's, it's ugly. There's no question about it. So you put it together and you try to come up with ideas. And that's exactly what I do for you in the morning. At approximately 8.45 or so in the morning, 8.50, I, I wait for the early reports to come out each weekday. And they come out, as you know already, they'll come out between the time frame of typically 6 o'clock in the morning Chicago time to 9 a.m. And I'll get as many as I can in because I want you to get what I'm, what I'm looking at, how the markets reacted to them. Then we discuss them. And we're talking about the impact on the markets. I'm covering 40 charts at a time. On Saturdays, we're going to do the longer term charts. We're going to move to the weekly charts. And in the weekly charts, we're going to look at those and then back them up with the dailies, but primarily the weekly for the traders that want something much longer in scope. The risks are sometimes a bit bigger and sometimes they're not. It gets pretty interesting on those charts. So you can watch this from your desktop, your PC. We give you, each subscriber of ours gets our mobile app that'll play all my videos as well. We will cover all of these charts and we're always adding and mixing charts to it. But it's each one, the typical video is 16 to 21 minutes long. In the bottom, when you're watching the video on our website, there's a scroll bar. And as you pull the scroll bar, it'll light up from other stock indices. Let's assume you want to go right to energies, pull it. It'll say in big words, energies, just let go when it plays. So it saves you an awful lot of time. And that, you know, time is key. There's a cost for it. $8.95 and you're going to get uh, 24 videos, if I'm correct, in a month. That's an awful lot. Now I'm starting to do special reports going into the fall. Those will be included for you. So I will cover stocks, different ETFs with special recommendations, backing it up. It's not free to the public, backing it up with you with uh, my ideas on it. So I've got a full agenda. I'm clearing my plate now to do all these things. And I'll probably start before September rolls around my first ones. Be ready for them. How do you get to take a look? Real simple, go to www.irapstein.com. On the top of the website's the word research. You can read right there and you sign up right there for yourself as well. You have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow.